Now let's take a walk through the code in this LabVIEW project. Begin by looking at the Project Explorer window for the home security system. RT main is the code that runs on the real-time target. There's also code that runs on the desktop, and these two VIs communicate with each other through the network. Have a number of support VIs and type definitions and network published shared variables for exchanging information through the network. I also have some documentation that you'll find helpful for this project as well. Let's take a look at RT main. We see a number of process loops. They look very similar to each other in structure. Of course, the behavior of each one is different. So we have a system manager, a number of system uh, tasks or support tasks. There was a command parser we were looking at earlier, and then the error handler. Each one of these parallel processing loops is a queued state machine, and the kernel VI in the center defines the behavior for each one. Depending on the requirements for each queued state machine, you can have external inputs, external outputs, and you also use the feedback node here to establish persistent data for the kernel. Now the kernel can be simple or it can be complicated. The system manager that I'm looking at right here is, uh, at, at first glance, seems quite elaborate and complicated, but it's really doing uh, nothing more than, than responding to various conditions and then causing certain actions to happen. Now, an easier way to grasp the uh, various states and what's happening in each one is contained in this Word document. For example, the system manager shows what happens to the data highway in each state. It, it shows what messages are enqueued to other states, and then also shows uh, any self-enqueued states. So this, this document details the behavior of each one of the queued state machines. Now, this PowerPoint gives you a way to visualize the behavior of the system. Now, let's visualize the behavior of the home security system. When the system first starts up, each one of the process loops is initialized, and this happens by enqueuing the initialized state into each one. Let's advance time, and then the state of each task now is initialized. In the initialized state, the data path variables are set to the values that you see here. And we see that two of the states also enqueue a new state for themselves. That is, the ready state is self-enqueued for the system manager, and the get code state is self-enqueued for the code validator. In the initialized state for the timer, for example, no new state is enqueued. And so when we advance time, we see that the state uh, it's essentially dormant. Essentially, it's waiting for a state to be enqueued right there. So that the timer becomes dormant, as is the buzzer, LED, and sensors process. Now, in the ready state, the system manager sets the mode to ready, and that enqueues the state monitor into the sensors task. This is an example of this queued state machine inserting a message into the queue of another queued state machine. The code validator, again, self enqueues the state get code. Now, if the present state is get code and then you enqueue the same exact state, we call this a regenerative state. This is important because the code validator needs to continue operating um, over time in particular, it's observing the keypad digit, and it needs to, to be able to continue executing and watching to see when that keypad digit becomes something other than negative one. All right, let's advance time. The sensors has now moved into the monitor state, and in the monitor state, it samples the input sensor door, presently set to the false value, and then stores that in the variable door previous. It, in a similar way, it samples the motion sensor presently producing false, and then it uh, saves that as motion previous. 
We see sensors is also self and queuing the same state monitor again. So this is another example of a regenerative state because uh, again, in a similar way that the code validator needs to keep running, the sensors process needs to keep examining door and motion sensors. All right, let's advance time again. Now the system is ready and we're uh, monitoring the door and motion sensors and then waiting for a valid code to be entered on the keypad. Now, while we're in this waiting mode, let's imagine that the door opens and we see that the door signal is now true. The sensors responds by enqueuing the message, which is a, an alert, and enqueues that message back to the system manager. So it's alert, door opened. Door is remaining high, the door previous now is is also uh, set high or true and in the door opened state the system manager issues the message beep chime and that's that's a a message that will cause the buzzer to activate the door chime so here we see the uh, buzzer is now in this state it will set the door chime to true and then itself enqueues the state initialize in this state, the door chime goes low again. All right, the door is closed. And we're all set, continue, continuing to wait for some other activity. Now, let's have the homeowner arm the system. Arming the system begins by uh, starting out the three-digit code entered on the keypad. We see that the keypad digit is now one. The code validator, in response to that, does a number of things. The first, uh, it, it initializes the time remaining counter to whatever the timer initial value is. So that, that's going to 30. The digit count is incremented. So we take the existing digit count and add one. The entered digit right here, or the entered code, is then going to be updated with this value one. The code validator, in response to this key press, also issues the message beep key press to the buzzer task. This is an example of how the code validator can interact with the buzzer and not get the system manager involved in this process. All right, let's advance time. Taking a look at the buzzer, the key press state means the key press is going to, or the key press indicator is going true, and that itself enqueues its own initialized state. Back in the code validator, time remaining is decremented, and the keypad digit has gone back to the uh, no key pressed value of negative one. Let's advance time. Here we're at uh, 28 now, so we're starting to count down. And the idea here is that you need to enter the code within a fixed time period, otherwise the code will reset. So we're at 26, 25. All right, let's press the second key on the keypad, digit two. That will then update the entered code that will be turned into uh, 1 times 10 plus 2, or 1, 2 at that point. The digit count takes 1 and adds 1 to it, so we'll see that one going to 2. And again, in this state, we issue another message to the buzzer to cause the key press sound. So we're counting down again. And here's the third digit that's been entered, and 1, 2, combined with three is one, two, three. So that, that matches what we're looking for. Also the digit count, two plus one, our digit count would be three. Code validator says we've got a match. It issues the message alert valid to the system manager and it enqueues the initialized state. And then it also kicks out another key press message to the buzzer. All right, advancing time then. The system manager now has just received the valid code entered alert 
and it en it enqueues the prearm state, and then it also issues the acknowledge uh, message down to the buzzer. Let's advance time. In the prearm state now, prearm is the new mode. The system manager also kicks out three messages. It it uh, produces the initialize state and the run state for the timer. And then it also issues this message to cause the LED to start blinking. All right, looking at the timer state in initialize, it resets the time remaining to this constant. And then it's important to, to note here that run as the enqueued state is not a self-enqueued state, for example, like we see indicated here but rather it was a second state that was queued up originally by the system manager. So initialize does not cause uh, a new state to be self enqueued rather it depends on some other queued state machine to do that. Looking at the LED process in the mode blink state, the mode is set to blink and then it self enqueues the state run. Let's advance time. At this point, the timer will be counting down towards zero and we are waiting for the homeowner to leave before arming the system. So looking at the timer here, the current time is decremented by one. And then the, the timer, while it's counting down, also self enqueues the run state. So let's watch this. All right, so the homeowner is now in the process of leaving the house as we watch the time remaining. That just counts down. Not much is happening. I'll jump ahead a little bit. So time remaining is now two. And when time remaining minus one equals zero, the timer issues the timed out message to the system manager, and then it enqueues its initialized state. Simply re resets time remaining back to 30. The system manager in the timed out state enqueues the armed state. Now at this point, the system is armed and the system is now watching the door and motion sensors. In the armed state, the system manager issues the message mode steady to the LED process. So when time advances, we see this is the next enqueued state. Notice again that in the run state, the process is still enqueuing itself. So it's regenerating run right there. Let's advance time a little bit more. Now we're in mode steady. That causes the mode to change to steady. And then uh, again, we have this enqueued state already. All right, let's advance time. And let's now consider the possibility of unexpected motion when the door and motion sensors are being monitored and the system is armed. All right, so we'll have uh, motion goes true. So we see that the difference between the present state of motion and its previous state is different. That causes the sensors task to issue the alert for motion back to the system manager. And self enqueues the alarm state mode is set to alarm and the alarm output this would be the one that controls the very loud alarm system that is going to true system manager enqueues the message mode steady into led so we're changing from blinking mode to steady mode all right there are uh, certainly more paths that we could explore here but hopefully this gives you a, a much better idea and uh, kind of an intuitive feeling for how these various queued state machines are interacting with each other.